This is a, this is a good start, isn't it? I think uh, I think I've had more comebacks than Frank Sinatra, actually. <laughs> So, uh, I want to talk to you about um, why we might need to break the mould and also how you, how you might be able to future-proof your council. So I don't want to talk about what the government could or couldn't have done. I don't want to hear about how dreadful the county council has been to you. No, I don't want to hear about crap Nalcar. Uh, this is all about us and what we can do for ourselves. So, I've no special skills to be able to talk about this. Uh, I've been a councillor here uh, for seven years, and some of you uh, will have been around much longer than that. But throughout my career, uh, I've asked one question. The question is, why? Why do we do this? Why us? Why now? And I think that's the question that most parish and town councils should be asking themselves over the next few years. So rather than waiting for others to tell us what to do, now is the time for the sector to seize the opportunity and shape its own future. We need to look ahead positively and maybe even discover the roles uh, of the original civic entrepreneurs, Joseph Chamberlain and Roundtree. But to do that, we're going to have to forge a new social contract with our citizens to reinforce and restore people's faith in local democracy as something which is progressive and is a vital institution. And make no mistake, parish and town councils are right at that call phase of local democracy, even though we sometimes don't see ourselves in that position. I'm suggesting that as a, uh, as a first step, councils and councillors um, need to have changed their, change their mindset, to have a civic mindset, including within it a much more ambitious view of what we can do as a sector. A better engagement but perhaps with all of our constituents, a thirst, a thirst to winkle out new talent, new local talent, and a recognition that we could use the money we raise in many different ways. And I've called these civic leadership, civic relationships, civic entrepreneurs and civic fin funding. And I'll come back to them later on. I want to start off, however, by making myself unpopular uh, by uh, talking a little bit about the sector. Uh, and I might be slightly unfair in these uh, assessments. So I want to make five points about the sector. So the first one is... Shh, don't tell anyone... Um, we are poor generally, and, I, and actually all of local government is, at the one thing that we should excel at, which is communicating and have a proper relationship uh, with, with our citizens. We're in a communication game, and yet we don't really want to play, do we? Uh, if we're feeling particularly generous, we work on what I call the Aldi principle, which is announce, listen, defend, then ignore. Uh, <laughs> The everyday reality is that now and again we ask people what, 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 uh, what we're up, we tell people what we're up to, we sometimes ask them what, we, what, what they think about what we've done, but we very rarely go back to them and actually assess whether that was successful or not. We're a long, it's not a dialogue, we're a long way from uh, a, perhaps a more fulfilling uh, representative democracy. And if you don't believe me, just when you get back to your parish and town council, have a look at the summons that, that, that asks you to come to committee meetings. And notice in the word summons, uh, and ask yourself, um, does this word, do these words on here encourage other people to come? Uh, does it sound interesting and sexy? Is it well laid out? Is it advertised in a way that people know where this meeting's taking place? And I suspect that 95% uh, of you will find the answer is no to all of those questions. Second point is, can, can we, can we really? Uh, I've uh, spent a lot of time travelling around the country talking to parish and town councils and to 
five or six county meetings. And the one thing that people come up to me afterwards and say is, can we really do that? Is that legal? My clerk won't allow us to do things like that. Or my councillors are not interested in doing um, you know, that kind of work. My reply is often, who's going to stop you? Who's going to stop you? Often the negativity, if there is any, is in here and it belongs to us. We lack confidence uh, as, as councillors and staff. We willingly uh, slot ourselves neatly into that hierarchy that the county council, the district and the unitary devise. They're at the top and we're somewhere near the bottom. And they think we're in that lowly position as councillors because we, we can't quite cut the mustard at, at any of those other two tiers. And yet most parish councillors that I know work harder, have longer hours, face their public much more and have a better grasp of local issues than anyone else. So we just need to be more confident about our own abilities and also be more ambitious about what we can do. Thirdly, oh, we all look the same. Um, I think we should be uh, honest that we don't really reflect the population at large. Most meetings I've attended elsewhere have been dominated by the middle-aged or elderly and white men. I'm not criticising them because we, and I'm elderly and white, we put in a lot of hours uh, to make that happen. But how can we expect to be relevant to the unemployed, to single mothers, uh, to, the young, to the young people? It's like asking a blindfolded man to work his way through a maze. So it's important that we break out and find new talent right across the board. Let's have a quick poll. How many of you uh, in your council have more than 25% women? How many have more than 50% women? Yeah, well, that's, more than that, that's more than I thought. But, yeah, but already we're beginning to fall at the first fence, aren't we, in terms of diversity? Fourth, rules. It's in the rules. Um, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. With Trumpton mayors, and, and, sorry, see what, um, um, <laughs> wigs and cloaks for clerks, bizarre, truly bizarre procedures and rules, and sometimes even a lack of clarity of why we're here. And yet, as I've said, we're in a communication business. We seem to go out of our way to exclude people by the very procedures we willingly adopt and impose upon ourselves. How can we be relevant if so much of what we do seems so alien and out of place? So just imagine uh, what it's like turning up on a cold Thursday night at one of your council meetings and not being allowed to speak or getting three minutes to get across a complex problem. It's bonkers, isn't it? And you wouldn't put up with it anywhere else. Fifth. Or your county or your unitary provide a better service than they did three or four years ago. Oh, where are you from? <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the only person in the room. And, and actually, it's, it's, this is not surprising, is it, if you think about it? I mean, districts have lost 40% uh, of their funding. They probably have somewhere near half the members of staff that they used to have. And actually those services that are most valued by the people you know are the ones that are being cut. And this is the important point here. None of that is coming back. This is not a temporary blip that if we can keep our head down, then we, we can all return to where we were before. The party is truly over. All of local government that we know and we've seen over the years and expect is not going to happen again. And surprise, surprise, suddenly we become of interest, haven't we, to the county councils and districts and unitaries about whether we'd like to take on some of their services. Uh, and my question to you is, do you really want to take on that highway verge that the county is offering you, or are there better things and more important issues uh, that are happening in your community? So are we forever going to be locked into those traditional services of allotments, bush shelters, and grass cutting, or are we going to rethink our role
from the start. Okay, so I've got that lot off my chest and I feel a lot better now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I could have a drink of <clears throat> So what's to be done? Well, I've got five points here as well. And the first one um, is what I call building a civic mindset. This is quite difficult because it's about what's up here. What's in our heads? How do we see the world? How do we see ourselves within it? And how do we, where do we see our parish or town cantons? And I find it difficult. Sometimes I get it, uh, but as uh, some of my colleagues know, I quite often regress into all thought processes. This is all about power. And whether we are big enough, mature enough, and interesting enough to share power with others, or even in some cases, give it away. We should see ourselves as, 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 a, as, a, as a locality, as a system, in which we provide a platform on which much of the work of others can be done and can be coordinated and can be successful. So why can't we see, um, see this place as somewhere where council business happens, of course? But just as significantly, shouldn't this be where real issues come to the fore and are addressed? Where the culture is, your voice is as important as mine, where yes <coughs> is heard more often than no, and where doing is more important than tradition. And we're also, finally, where there's a clear idea of where we were sure which routes we're going to take to get there. So as a first step, I would suggest we need to stop building organisations set up exclusively to deal with the internal affairs of the council. Because that's what we do. Just look at any of your hierarchies, an organisational charts, uh, but create one that actually is good for the external community and based on an on on agreed set of values. So here in Froome, for example, we only have two committees. One's called Council Matters, which is a little play on words, and that's all about efficiency, effectiveness, HR, land we own. And the other one is called Town Matters, and is everything else. So we don't need, all of, we don't need to ape uh, you know, the larger councils and having policy and resources and finance subcommittee and the parks and cemeteries and all the rest of it because it's just not necessary to take you away from what I think is the real work. So that, mind, that mindset shift is quite, uh, is, is quite something to take in. So let me just give you a few examples of what that might mean. Well, as I've said, it's about distributing power, uh, money and influence to other people, to local volunteers, to charities. It's about addressing topical issues as they come up and sometimes acting as a mediator between those people in our community, advocating for those people who are less well off, building relevant databases about the needs of the area. How, much, how many of you really know what's happening uh, in, in statistical terms in your community and actually what resources are available out there like volunteers? It's about maybe promoting alternative services, especially around uh, areas like transport, about creating informal opportunities for contact uh, rather than committees and obviously it's about engaging more people in decision making. So around that civic mindset I, I've built four, uh, four subsets of civic roles. And the first one is about civic leadership. This is me on. Um, let's make use of our democratic legitimacy. People voted for us uh, so we can ask fundamental questions about what is this community, what unique problems and issues do we face, where do we want to be in 5, 10, 15 years time, how are we going to get there, how much, how much do you want to engage in our thinking and crucially how much are you prepared to pay. So civic leadership to me is about making connections, about oiling wheels, about breaking down barriers, about building trust, about innovating and having a can-do spirit. The third area is civic relationships. Surely, surely our aim should be to create the conditions 
that help the community to flourish, where individuals can influence events around them, where there's strong support networks, and where we can create a sense of belonging and connection. And why, and why shouldn't we have high expectations of ourselves, our parish, our street? Why shouldn't we be encouraging residents to be more involved, feeling or care about their locality, and confident and maybe even appreciating for once their parish and town council? And people do want to be involved, don't they? They expect nowadays to have their say, but they want it at a local level. And they wanted, about, they wanted about something real, something tangible, something in touch, not about whether or not the local plan is going to have 5,000 houses in a nearby town or, or next to where you live. It's actually something real about them and their street and, and, and the place they live. So they care about their street, they care about their neighbours, they care about their relatives. And a good example, which Max referred to, is, is reflected in Froome with the, the work of the local health centre here. Which have got, you know, who've got 500 people who are signed up as health connectors uh, you know, for many things, but also to combat uh, isolation and loneliness, and they're all volunteers. So, we need to be bending over backwards uh, uh, to engage with people in this civic relationship, embracing all of social media, uh, listening to and hearing what pe people say, sweeping away practices that hinder communications, and above all, being humble, recognising that parishioners, as individuals, are quite as likely to have the answer, the same, a better answer than we have. Why should we have better answers just because we've been elected? Fourth one is about civic entrepreneurs. People change places. And I call these civic entrepreneurs. All communities, big and small, have a variety of individuals, volunteers, philanthropists, interest groups and public bodies who together make up that rich tapestry of local life. They're the people who change towns and parishes for the better. You all know those individuals. Every one of you in this room will have met those people who punch above their weight and, as I say, make things happen. And I see some people in this room who've done that in Froome. But who helps, those, who helps those people, those groups? Who helps them to see the wider picture? Uh, who helps them to get on with the job they really uh, set out to achieve? Who identifies the glaring gaps? Who helps them to coordinate actions? Who provides them with the skills and the resources to be successful? Maybe it should be us. And maybe we should spend a lot more time nurturing those individuals and groups. And actually, closer to home for all of us, how do we search out, encourage and develop more people to be local councillors so that they too can turn out to be civic entrepreneurs? And finally, civic funding. Well, obviously we can talk about the precept. This is money we raise locally for our community. I'm proposing that instead of much of it being used primarily to fund uh, the council, an increasing amount um, could be spent locally to make organisations stronger. So we use our money and give it away to other people. And what's not the like about that? Uh, on the day a decision is made to raise taxes, instead of us going around like this, perhaps we should be out on the streets celebrating and whooping because actually it shows we care about our neighbours who live in our locality. So just to prove a point, 20% uh, of, of uh, Froome's budget last year was used by others in the form of grants, crowdfunding, the people's budget and so on. And I am stunned, stunned by the fact that the people we give this money to often double or treble the amount we've given them and, and pull in hundreds of volunteers who themselves gain from that experience. And a quick mention, I guess, of other sources of funding uh, other than the precept. Crowdfunding can work uh, for local initiatives. You can use your resources to winkle out large amounts of what I call funny money from lottery, from the government, even from local philanthropists who've been surprisingly generous in this area. And I'm not talking about small amounts. 
We're talking about hundreds of thousands that have been raised over the last few years in this town by means other than the precept. We have put the precept up by 60% as well during that period <laughs> and had two letters of complaint. Two letters. Because actually, when you look at the bill, it isn't very much, is it? And yet we seem to resist putting up the precept uh, as a way forward. So the power to change those funding arrangements and to have more money for those people who say we can't do this because we've only got one clerk or we've got five members of staff or whatever, you can do it if you want. So, in conclusion, it's a hackneyed phrase, but the world's changing fast around us. And if you think about environmental changes, the fragility of many of our communities, the rise and rise of social media, the changes that Brexit's going to bring, the death of local government that I've referred to, the struggles of the NHS, the hollowing out of the state, ageing demographics, the desire for people to be heard, I could go on. But essentially, and this applies to everybody, whether it's a town or a very small village, how are we going to build more resilient communities that will be able to withstand the shock of the unknown. None, none of this can be sorted or delivered from top down. There, most answers, where there are answers, can only be found locally. And there's no one more local than us. So through adversity, through all of those things that I've listed, there's an opportunity if we get our act together to fill some of the holes, to create a new civic perspective and to assist our communities in their search for happiness and prosperity. So I leave you with that one question that I started with at the beginning to think throughout the day. Why? Why this way? Why now? And why not me and my council? Thank you. Thank you, Mel, for a customarily uh, provocative uh, address. Um, uh, I'm sure you're full of reactions to that. We're not going to be able to debate all that now because we need to get ourselves into groups. Uh, but there'll be plenty of time to pick up on the themes that Mel has introduced as we go throughout the rest of the, of the day. Um, I understand that some people have not yet signed up for groups. Could people indicate who they are? <laughs> 